food is the second biggest cause of climate change um, after coal-fired power stations. 24% of New South Wales carbon comes from the growing production, transport and waste of food. So for me now, the only game in town is food. Now this is a really shocking photograph. It's a thermal image and shows the temperature of the land between 1am and 5am on the 6th of February 2009. The red is hot. All the roads in the city, this is my house here, are over 32 degrees. So the roads don't have to meet any sustainability rules. The roads are heating our cities six to eight degrees hotter than they need be. This is vandalism going out he here with all these council and government agencies who are driving up the costs of aircon and making the money we spend on insulating and designing our houses superfluous. So that's why I'm doing these pop-up gardens, is to cool roads, cool our cities. So we had no money and I wanted to water this area. There's not, nothing like having no money to make you creative. And I, I perv on water, I perv on drain pipes and things. <laughs> Walking down, I thought, hang on, there's water up there. So what we did is where we got agreement, we dug up where this drain pipe crossed here to the street, here, see this here? We dug this up and we sawed or broke up the pipe and we replaced it with egg pipe, which is a leaky drainage pipe. Now when it rains, the water comes down and stays here. So this has got nice luscious thing. That tree over there is getting thousands of litres of water that it didn't get. And it's self-irrigating. See where Claire is? Um, She's got, in a sense, one foot in one world and one foot in another world. <laughs> th th this foot here is in the road engineer's world, down there. And the other foot is up in the, the verge or the, the plant area. So there's that tree just 300 away from all this water that's going to that grate. The road is designed to treat water as a waste product. And we estimate we're getting over 4 million litres of water to stay here. Isn't it lovely when you do this? Growing food is a great common meeting place and um, much more interesting than, you know, solar panels and stuff like that. But also, ultimately, much more efficient at reducing energy and water. So it brings all those things together. Um, and we did other things. Well, I didn't do it, the compost did it. Um, this is self. And it's taken us about four years to get the soil back. This is a pawpaw tree. Um, we're going to cut this, but these green pawpaws, you can make green pawpaw salad. This is really good for the corners of the streets because with this narrow trunk, you don't obscure vision, so it doesn't interfere with safety. And you can do it. There's nothing like walking out, picking your own mint um, and, and herbs and taking them back in and chucking them in the salad. It's a great way to live. The council asked me to make a plan to make um, uh, the suburb sustainable. And I finished the plan and it frightens the bejesus out of the staff and they've locked it in a safe. <laughs> and so what I'm doing, some people come to me and there have been three groups come here from China to talk to me about the plan. So I've shown it to some famous architects and engineers and they've written letters of support, but still it stays locked in a safe. So some friends come to me and say, we love the plan. So it's going on the web next week. <laughs> so what would be really great, um, I'm going to bring it on next week. Go to my webpage, sustainablehouse.com.au. I'm going to give the URL for the Chippendale Sustainable Plan. It's not just about us. If we can get a plan up like this, like when I did the public composting, now the council has a policy. Now they've got a road verge garden policy. If we can get this, this plan up to make a su suburb sustainable, you can use it where you are. For example, it gives rate rebates to people who garden in the street, rate rebates to people who compost. It rewards us for the value that we offer to society.
it involves us and Indigenous people in choosing trees. When I said to the council tree person, I would like to talk to an Aboriginal elder about choosing a tree, she said, what would they know? <laughs> it, all these native tree plans, not one Indigenous person consulted, and I'm way over it. So please help us get this plan up, sign the petition, um, it's a nice petition, it says nice things, it's not aggressive, and help me stand in the, in the spotlight with me and help us get this plan up, because we know what to do, we feel it. It's our planet, our roads, our streets, we need to own this.